What's up, y'all? Hope all is well. Hey, hey, everybody. So, listen, um, I'm actually, um, I was thinking about something because after I got through watching the inauguration, uh, and I was joking around and playing because I thought about, you know, our uh, election process that we're going through or about to take place right now. Let me just say this to y'all. We have gone through so much as a church. We have lost people. We have dealt with the foolishness and all of this stuff like that. Now it's time to elect again. Now it's time, it's election process. Uh, we gotta go and put somebody in the seat. Hey auntie, all of this stuff like that. My only thought is this. What are we, what, are, what, what is the next process? What are, what are we really looking for? What is the direction that we're trying to go? Hey, what's the direction that we're trying to go? Better yet, the, be, the, be, the, the better question is, what do we really want? What type of presiding bishop do we want, honestly? Do we want money? Do we want glitz and glam do we want like fluff and stuff do we want spirituality do we want a combination of things um are we concerned about a name all of these things because again we're putting people in these seats but Honestly, do they and I'm not even I'm not even going to be or put personal thoughts or opinions in it. My question is, we're putting people in these seats, but do they have spirit? Do they have heart? Do they have the anointing? Are they going to take us to the next level? Okay, Maurice, you and I both know that, but I'm just, I'm just trying to make the people think. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying? Hey, Chris. Hey, y'all. Before we even say that, Maurice, before we even say that, I want the people to really think because honestly, since, hey, Marco, since J O Pat, since G E Patterson, we have not had. Okay, that that doesn't even really sound right, y'all. I gotta I gotta hear my nose. Um, since G E Patterson, we have not really had spirit. We got financial leadership. Oh God, <laughs> Maurice, financial. We got finances. We got a leader that has money. But we're lacking. You get what I'm saying? We're lacking. Seriously. We're lacking. Wrong to say that. Hey, Maurice. Apostle, man of God. Yes, sir, Bishop. What's up? Can you hear me? I hear you. Well, I would say this. We need not only spiritual, which is our main focus point, it's the spirituality of our church. But we need someone who will focus on the heritage that we were brought upon, founded upon. And um, we also need someone who will bring, uh, hold on, look to my computer cord, that will bring diversity to not sin, but diversity. And when I say that, uh, we need someone who can bridge the gap. Because mm -hmm. for so long, our church has been an old man's church. We've been an old man bullying church. If you, if you not, you know, I, I took some criticism. I took some criticism a few months ago when I had Bishop Whitehead on my Facebook Live especially from this generation, because we were taught, and this was our thing, 
that we were always taught that we should respect leadership. And I respect leadership. I, I respect any for not bishop in office. I've been voting in the church. I'm, I'm I've been a voting delegate. Maurice, your um, video going out. Can you hear me now? Yeah, your video going. Yeah, I hear you now. Okay. Um. So I'm, I'm, I'm. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at our church and where we at now. Thank God for Bishop J. O. Patterson. He served his generation. Bishop L. H. Four served his time. That was my godfather. Bishop Chandler Owens. I was a great supporter of Bishop Owens. I stood with Bishop Owens every time he wanted to run for PB, including in 2007, when we were sitting in Temple of Deliverance. And I saw some things go on. I'm very, people be like, you know, you two observing. Yeah, I'm watching my surroundings. I watched how the leadership of the church one has gone on to be with the Lord. The other one now is first sister, along with the presiding bishop, how they all exited, I mean, a temple of deliverance for a bathroom break. All three of them, all of a sudden, two went out of one door and the other one out of the other door. But see, don't nobody want to talk about stuff like that because we, we want to keep an image. We want to keep our name, make a name. But I, I, I stand with with the idea, I respect every person that's running for general board. I probably don't preach for them uh, uh, anyway. Majority of those that are running for general board, I know them. I've been to their local assemblies. Um, now the four men who, who are scheduled to run for presiding bishop, once they are reelected on the general board, I have, I, I know them. I've seen them work their way in the church. Um, you know, and I just feel that we don't need a repeat of what we've had. Mark, I, I agree, Maurice. I just feel like, you know, it's, 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 it, it almost feels like not as bad as, as President Trump, but it feels like there's a, there's a people that want us to flourish and become more and to grow and to prosper because honestly and I, I can't speak for nobody else's reformation but my own i I've, I've been church of god in christ my entire life since i was born in this world and if you look at it if you look at it when bishop paul morton found it for gospel they want to say he was a pastor of baptist church yes he was but bishop paul morton's father as well as his late brother who passed away last year, were members, of, and Bishop Morton himself, were members of the church. Most of what they are doing are similarity to the Church of God in Christ. The only thing he does differently is he ordained women. Well, here's, no, so far, here's the thing. In well, order now for, Bishop Walker, I'm sorry, Bishop Walker, but that's what his idea was. In order for us to be a successful church, I've been vlogging forever. In order for us to be a successful church, we have to look at our leadership. And well, as I another said, reason I'm hoping Bishop Shea went too, because I uh, another blogger told another well-known blogger told me that if Bishop Shea wins, then he's leaving Church of God in Christ. So I'm really. Are you for real? <laughs> You don't, it's only two bloggers from Church of God Christ. Don't do that, Maurice. <laughs> well, I would say that person has their so, Jay Juice here from a of me. <laughs> that person has their own thing, you know, whatever. And I'm you know, I'm not here to whatever. But I just feel like all around, if we don't change stuff, we're gonna lose people. We go to church to dance, to shout, and to give offerings. There is no, like real talk, there's no education in this church. Do you get what I'm saying, Maurice? Yeah, can you and hear me? We, and we really need to educate our people 
so that we're not spiritually minded, but we're stupid. We're not so spiritually minded that we're stupid, you know? And it's like this right here. We also need to teach our men and our women how to do better and, and stop marrying these people for the sake of titles and positions. Because if you're anointed, you're anointed whether you married or not. And then stop giving yep. these folks and they don't know how to be leaders. Well, one now, thing now, I know, I if you look at, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. If you look at history of our church, look at the AIM convention. Two men who are, who are currently seeking for the office of presiding bishop both led the AIM convention. Mm -hmm. Wait, Dillard is going for the presiding bishop too? Don't freeze on me. Maurice. Lord. Call me back. Is is Dilla is Dilla trying to be the presiding bishop too? Well, no. Maybe he's talking about Michael Hill. Maybe he's talking about Michael Hill. Oh, hold on. Maurice. I don't know what happened. I'm back. Are you talking about Michael Hill? No, no. I said let the AIM convention. Bishop said Bishop um, Macklin led it, then Bishop Shear. Okay. Now the youth department, now the youth department, we can go there too. We can go there too. I'll go there too because we, no, no, no. Because those no, three no. leaders. Maurice, Maurice. Oh. here's what I'm going to say about the church. Because I've worked in the evangelism and I worked in the music department. And I've also helped work the stage. Here's I'm tired of people that's caught up in titles and positions so you can go sit on the stage. Right. Don't nobody know how to work. Now, you and I both know that great leadership comes from being in battles, from work, basically from working. You don't, you don't just get in evangelism and you've never evangelized. You've never got down there and prayed and tarried with somebody and delivered a demon. And, you know, I, all the, the, I've done this stuff before. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying right. to pitch. I'm just saying. But right. it's like you just sit back and you see these people, and it's like, what have you done? Oh, you can preach? That's it? I'm currently, I'm currently I didn't even know. I, I, I had Bishop Hankerson laughing because we were talking not a few days ago, actually. And he said, you know, you're still my special advisor to the president and i was looking like huh i didn't even know i had the position you know i'm like special advisor to the president so what does that entail or special assistant however you want to say special i'm like what does that entail please tell me because a lot of times people get positioned and they don't know what it what they are well, see what I'm I mean. working in the foreign field. Here's point in case. I'm working in a foreign field right now. I'm I'm the director of missions for Sierra Leone, West Africa, in the Church of God in Christ missions department. We have currently on roster submitted to the missions department eighty something churches in, that are in, in, Sierra, in Sierra Leone, West Africa. Okay. Who has to be vetted and you know, they have to get all the paperwork. That's why they have to be submitted. However, I know some people who who are being placed in foreign field. Who, well, I couldn't go over to Sierra Leone due to COVID, of course. We can't go over there right now. And, and, and you know, I, I desire to go. I got my passport and everything. Made sure what during COVID I had everything updated. You know, made sure, you know, get getting all my shots and everything. But there are some people who are who are vying for offers of bishop in foreign fields, but are not producing any work. As well as over here in domestic areas, as we call it. There are men who want to be jurisdictional prelates of jurisdictions just so they can say, I got a purple shirt, a gold chain and a ring, and I got a seat on the platform under all those bright lights. 
So when the lights go out, what are you doing? When the stage is taken down, what are you doing? I'll never forget Bishop Blake, and I wasn't there, but I'll never forget the saying that he said because he said it several times. Bishop Blake had a saying said, when all else is done, when we running for these positions, when we're seeking for this, follow me home. Now, due to social media, due to social media, and I, and I hope I'm not talking too much, but due to social media, we want to publicize everything we're doing. But if we didn't have social media, would we still be doing what we're doing if the people can see what we're doing? Not, not just that, Maurice, but it's like, even if you weren't publicizing it, can somebody else vouch for you to say, you know what? And like, ain't gotta be lying. Like he does this, he does that. Like seriously, half these folks ain't saved. True. And I'm just, I'm just being honest. Half these people are not saved. And then it's like, and and and, and the only reason why I have calmed down is because I really want to do something else. I'm tired of knowing. I'm tired of knowing everybody else's dirt. I. I'm I'll sick of knowing about who ain't doing right, who ain't sleeping right, who ain't. I'm about there go my phone fell again. Huh? I said my phone fell. But listen, oh. it, and when you said that, you know, again, I'm observing, but I can't tell everything, but I'm very observant. Uh, uh, but I will say this. Our church is in a very critical moment. We say that often, but we really don't see it. Yesterday alone, two bishops passed away who were active with their jurisdictions. They might have had afflictions, but they were active. They both left here. Our spirit, I call her my spiritual mom. She always said she was my spiritual mom. Even when, when I didn't agree with everything she wanted to tell me. Supervisor Pat Lewis. Yep. And it's, it's a shame how they did her. I'm going to leave that alone. Maybe I yeah. should, maybe I shouldn't, but. Well, we're not going to, right. We're not going to, we're not going to dwell on that. But, but one thing I can say about her was that she, 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 she took the hits. And she kept on doing what God told her to do. Maurice. Okay. So let's, let's pause right here for a second. It's on Pat. Women have served in our church, yet and still, they don't get the recognition that they deserve. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Well, I believe, and I believe because I you freezing again. And okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, I was yeah. on the call the other night. I was on the I was on the call. It wasn't a private call because they put the the info on, on social media. Bishop Shear made a statement the other night, and I believe when he said it, he was sincere. He 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 made a statement, and he's often made it. He didn't agree when Mother Rivers was removed. He didn't didn't agree how it was done. He he made that vocal. I was vocal about it. I didn't agree with it the way it was done. I felt that it should have been done differently. However, I don't have a voice to to do. But he also said that he. Loves Mother McCool, Mark McCool Lewis, and she's doing a tremendous job. He's not gonna, he's not gonna make changes with that department, but he's going to make some things happen for the women. Now, I've seen him personally. I've been to his convocation and workers' meetings. He has a supervisor who's emeritizing Mother Kareen. She's asking for a mayor to staff, Mother Kareen Wade Adams. He treated her so great that she even said she has never had a problem with him being the leader. You have to look at the track record of how me, these, some of these men are treating the women that they're around. Now, he could have easily placed his sister-in-law as a supervisor. He didn't. He placed another. Thank God for, you know, thank God for Dr. Cole. Dr. Cole is doing a tremendous job as elect lady. Mm -hmm. She could have easily said, okay, you're going to be my sister. He said, no, there's somebody else who was here serving before you were assisted. I'm putting her in there. There's no, there's no backlash. 
everybody, the transition is going smoothly. That's from what they were talking about Monday night. Okay? So I feel that he's going to try to, to do something different for the women's department. I don't know what the other candidates are going to do. I haven't heard them. I'm not really not trying to hear them because my mind is already made up. <laughs> I'm with you. But I'm just being uh, My mind uh, is made up. Like, I already and, and, Right. And, and when you know, you know. I'm, I'm loyal to those who are stern and loyal, uh, not just to me, but to God's word. They tried to put a, a lie out on, on, on Bishop Shear years ago, talking about that Jay Drew's son, that Jay Drew's child was here. We knew that was a lie. Those of us that was around him. Bishop Shear loves his wife. Bishop Shear is a family man. There's nothing that they can say about Bishop Shear to me, and they're not gonna get backlash for trying to say it. You can't come to me talking about Bishop Shear. I'm not putting him in the place of God but I've seen him on a personal level. I've seen him still open the car door for his wife. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I've seen him. We were sitting at a table. I preached for him upstairs in his office eating. I've seen how they were interacting. I'm watching. I'm observing. He showed me when, 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 when I... Maurice, that comes from you actually have a, re a for real, for real relationship with your spouse. A lot of these people, and I don't, yeah. I'm not speaking for everybody, I'm saying very much so in general. A lot of these people don't have legit relationships with their spouses. They just, it's just for the people. And it's like, this is why we have problems because that same spirit. It flows to the church. And I mean, it just got to change. Like it just got to change. And then it's like you got a younger generation coming up, and it's not that generation is us. We see it. We've saw it. We work with all of you all, and it's like we at a point like okay, like I love y'all, but I'm just I'm not about to be with the foolishness. Like I want to serve, right. but I just want to do all this. Like no, right. So we, 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 we must see change and we are, we're going to see change come February 23rd. Um, I just believe, and I've said it, I look, not only do that, not only do I look at the personal, but I look at the people and I look at how our church has focused. When Bishop Shear ran in 2012, his first time, he came in number three. No, he was number two. No, 12, he came in number three. 16, he came. And two. Three, two. Okay. Yeah, 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 okay. Three, two. And 2021, he's gonna come in. See, it was it was strategically planned by God. We can't count God out of this. Okay. <laughs> you know, yeah, he, if you look at like, numbers three, two, one. I was in the counting down the room. Yeah. Right. Yep. Because I think at that time, when he ran the first time, that was after Bishop Patterson had died and we were in St. Louis. Right. By right. That's after Bishop Owens died. That was yes. the year after Bishop yes. Owens died because we had the vacancy on the general board after Bishop Owens died. But then that ushered in Bishop Shear, Bishop Porter, Bishop Ted Thomas, Bishop Wu. Those four got on in 12. And I think... Because Bishop White was on there in 08, I think. Yeah, Bishop White got on there, I think, in 08. My only thought is this. This is this, this it, Maurice. This is my thought. Now, when I, when I think about them, you know, I think, as I said on one of my videos, they need to really listen to not only God, but the people. The people see what's going on. The people know what's going on. They know what we want. We've we've got all the bump and everything like that. All the music. Where is the spiritual? Do y'all Negroes have a prayer life? Do we see y'all at 5 a.m. prayer down there with Mother Kelly? 
are you really going before the Lord not to be seen, but to really get something personal for you? Cause like well, it ain't like y'all. Well, John, John, no offense, no offense. By five a.m., they probably back at the rooms getting ready for for official for the uh, opening and at eight a.m. <laughs> so you know they got to get back for the opening. <laughs> So we well, got to give them that much. At least come by midnight, though. At least come by midnight. You made a good point. If you know that spiritually the people need some, y'all need to cut some of, the, some of these long meetings out. Like, if you know that you need to be somewhere seeking, seeking the Lord's face, you need to leave the service and go get your rest so you can be up trying to get a spiritual impartation from the Lord. Period. That, that's, just, that's just facts. Why are we having all these all night services, and all we doing is just jockeying for positions? I ain't and gonna tell you. Who can as excited as excited I am to go to convocation to aim, I look at the schedule that we have. By the time if we had aim, we're up at about six five o'clock, getting ready for that breakfast every morning. The mission event is breakfast at seven o'clock, and I date and I'm working on the revive fire team. My day don't end. To revive fires over, that could be two o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. So, so, and revive fires has become a popular norm now. Maurice, I'm gonna tell you something. Revival fire ain't popping like that. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Because <laughs> okay, I sometimes it was. Okay. No, Maurice, <laughs> come on now. All we do is we get these <laughs> preachers that we think are hot and they can tune and holler. And we did at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, that, yeah. Really, you just got the organ going. Like, is the spirit really there? Like, I ain't talking about emotion. Is the spirit really there? But again, that's, you true. Know, that's true. We'll agree to disagree. No, I'm, no, I agree with you on that. I, I just want us to be better. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want us to be not only... Actually, and I'll say this, it's popping for... When, let, maybe maybe I should have used better words. It's popping for this generation of church church people. Because the saints, the saints are probably... Um, like I said, I, I go... I go because I'm on staff. But a lot of times I don't stay the whole service. I, well, I know when I, was working, when I was working revival fire and evangelism, like I left, like you know, it yeah, because your body, was, like, really you have to, you have to be cautious of your body. Yeah, I man, do all that stuff no more. I'm getting too old for it now. <laughs> I mean, my our thirties. Come on now, like we ain't got time to be. I, you know, me personally, that's why I'm taking care of myself now. I'm not trying to be in a wheelchair, have a cane, and all this other stuff. No, I want to. I, I want to live look. long. Look, and now that now now. <laughs> but the next meeting they have the 40 and under. Um, when are they supposed to be doing the the election thing? I don't know. I know it's before the twenty third of February. I know, I know. I saw that, but you know, Prince Bish, uh, Prince Brian got a a forum coming up with the general board with the current incumbents on the way the church is headed, and I'm gonna I'm gonna put some questions in my email and send to them and see. If I said this. I said this, Maurice. They're doing interviews or they're doing national things and i'm just like who are y'all talking to like and, and, and i asked him, i said well i said listen i said i'm open to doing a whole forum on my show and we can talk about it because i have a lot of coaching people that almost a, every coaching person follows me let's talk because the people want to know what's going on some people don't want to be involved in the church no more because there's been so much stuff going on. And it's like the people want to know, what are you going to do that's going to be different from what's already been? Stop having these forums with people that ain't nobody finna go to their stuff. 
and don't nobody even know who they are. I turn to the popularity contest. If you're not a household name, you're not going to have a big gathering. I listen even to the, to uh, you know, I, I, I served my bishop as an adjunct even before I'm with the bishop I'm with now. My late pastor, which was Mother Whitley's father, I was his adjunct when he made us the bishop. I'll never forget, you would hear leaders of the church, I'm not going to service because such, such preaching. I'm not doing this because such, such doing it. I'm not going. But yet, when you want, and, and, and it's even with praise and worship, I notice, and that's on a local level, or just, however you want to say it, on a local level, any level, when praise and worship is going on, most of the times the leader's in the office. When I'm going to minister with somebody, it is known by the preacher. If I'm there before the service starts, about the time the service starts, hey, you want to sit in the office? No, let's go and worship. Why you want to sit back here and talk? Let's go in service. What we could talk about, we could talk about after service. Let's keep our minds focused on what's going on in the worship. Now, if they do testimony service, Thank sometimes you. I will read, sometimes I will will we nig of going in for testimony service because of the fact. Sometimes people testify, and then if God have you ministered to them, you don't want them to think that you're basing your prophecy off of their testimony. So, you know, but I notice leaders who are who are not really focused on the worship, the praise, they stay hidden. My bishop right now is 84 years old, but I guarantee you every Friday night when he's in church, every Tuesday night, when they're in prayer, every Sunday morning, he's on his knees at 84 years old, on his knees praying. Then, when praise and worship, testimony service is going on, he's right there. He might go out right about the time the scripture is going to go forth so he can have time to go put his preaching stuff garments on. But he comes right back down. He leaves his Bible down. He comes right back down. He don't stay up there holding no meetings. He's right back. And when you have leaders, and, and that's what I'm saying, when you have leaders who are attentive to the move of God, who are attentive to the spirit of God, we need leaders who are going to usher in the presence of God. I remember, and I'll never forget this, when Bishop Darrell Hines first got on the jump board, I, 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 I laughed, I made, I made him laugh at, about this. I said, Bishop Hines, what you doing? Because we were all, we were in um, Little Rock, I believe. We, had, we were in Little Rock. When, when he first, him and Bishop Matthew Williams first got on the board, we were in Little Rock, Arkansas. All the John board members were still at the hotel, which was two blocks down from the convention center where we were. Bishop Hunt, service started, press started at 6.30. I was there because I put shields over there. I, I went over with shields at 6.30 every night. Mm -hmm. We were in prayer. Only general board member in prayer was Bishop Darrell Hines. 